Duke CT here, not really live at uh, the Duke CT Lounge, but special reason for that because we have a special guest all the way from the Reviewverse, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I get you the host of TV Trash, Rowdy C. Glad to be here, Duke. Ah, uh, no problems. And you were, you know, the reason why I asked you to be on this show, the Duke CT Lounge, is that you had some very interesting opinions about. Uh, the WWE, the WWE Network, and why, why is how the WWE is, and or why it is right now? Because a lot of people, you know, you know, you did rub a little bit of people the wrong way and such. Some people are like saying, "Well, the WWE sucks," or just why, why this guy's not getting pushed, or what have you. Some say the WWE Network is doing things, not really doing good things. Well, there's a lot of things to cover here. Yeah, so, absolutely. Okay, let's 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 get the basic stuff out of the way, and get into one of the main uh, stuff here about. Well, I mean, the main thing is well, the WWE. You know, what do you think the state is? Because personally, I think the state is at least okay, but I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So yeah, what is uh, your and uh, what I'll definitely say is that. Well, first off, you get I, I, everyone who's talked to me via Twitter and other methods of social media know that, you know, I'm a guy. Maybe I'm probably not as critical of current state of WWE that probably for a few, probably a few wrestling fans are, and I think that's for two reasons. First off, is the fact that you know, as also a fan and of other more mainstream sports, I've been so frustrated with how my Texas Rangers have been performing over the last couple of years. I just don't think I have enough. R- enough in me to complain about the state of WWE, but that's probably near, he, neither here nor there. I mean, and also I said, I was never a guy who enjoyed, and, and this is historically, because I haven't been a wrestling fan that relatively long. I mean, I started following WWE, actually, back not just in 2002, but I've actually found out the very first WWE show I watched on TV was, believe this or not, the very first episode of SmackDown under the WWE title, if you can believe that. That's kind of a strange thing that that ended up being. So, But looking back just on the history of the organization, I can tell you that the, the, the Attitude Era and what it stood for definitely wouldn't have been my cup of tea. Now, I would have loved the, um, the way wrestling was and WWE was back in the 1980s with the rock and wrestling era. In fact, I've always said, for me, the the price of the WWE Network's worth it enough just to get the old episodes of Saturday Night's main event, if you can believe that. But I think the main thing, what, I, th- I think that what caused me to, causes some people to get rubbed the wrong way is, look, I understand that there's a large number of fans out there that, that they, they're not too thrilled with the current state of WWE, but, and, and that's okay, they're, they have that, the right, to be disappointed, I just think their anger's a little misdirected as to what, um, as to who exactly is could be to blame for the way things are going as they are. And I think the WWE, ne- and I think a lot of it has some ties with, you know, what's going on with the WWE network or not, if you could just run all that. So we both know what's going on with the network right now. I mean, that we've already just saw them. Um, you know, the the King of the Ring event just a couple weeks ago, that was exclusive to the network. And now uh, word came out just this past Monday that there's going to be an Elimination Chamber event exclusive to the network in between these next two pay-per-views. You know that, right? Yes, yeah. Absolutely. And, were... and that just tells shows to me more and more that, you know, WWE is definitely hoping and banking on the network being more and more of their primary means of distribution. And that doesn't surprise me because here's the, here's, here's what I've been thinking more than anything else is that obviously when people complain about what's going on in WWE, the, the, the number one target of everyone's vitriol is Vince McMahon. I mean, and Kevin Dunn, if you know more of the backstage areas. And, yeah, well, and per- such. perhaps. I guess the main thing is that everyone is assuming, obviously, if you were to poll a lot of, I think, wrestling fans nowadays, you'd probably get the, um, the, the majority opinion would be that they don't like the way Monday Night Raw is being run. On the flip side, they do like how the way the developmental program, NXT, is being run on the WWE Network. 
And then they'll point to the fact that obviously, you know, McMahon's the one in charge of Monday Night Raw. Triple H is the one in charge of NXT. And that's why so many people are calling the just Vince McMahon to just move away 100 percent. Let Triple H take over the whole operation. And then once we might see, finally see NXT quality programming on Monday Night Raw and the pay-per-views and everything will be hunky dory. Um, um, as I as a certain ESPN college football analyst might say to that, not so fast, my friend. <laughs> because I just think there's some other areas that you've got to take you know, look into because, like I said, ob- uh, the one thing, I apologize if I'm just rambling here and stuff. But, Go ahead, I ramble all the time. On these yeah, things. but the thing that I'm going at is, uh, obviously, when they, people are blaming Vince McMahon for what's going on on Monday Night Raw and the pay-per-views in general, I think a lot of people are, are just believe that Vince McMahon is the be-all, end-all, final say when it comes to what goes on WWE programming. And I'm not trying to be a Vince McMahon apologist here, but I'm just going from my experience, not just as a wrestling fan, but as a guy who's done, who's reviewed TV shows for the last few years or so, I think I've, I would hope that I've learned a thing or two about how television networks operate. And that's what I'm saying that when, at least when it comes to the shows that are run on networks like USA at Sci-Fi, Vince doesn't really have the last say. I'm telling you, he's had to answer to the higher-ups at USA and uh, Sci-Fi, which is all under the NBC Universal conglomerate. I mean, I, he, one of the big complaints I hear from a number of fans is that the stories that Vince regularly shows up with changes and rewrites to the raw scripts almost just minutes before they go on the air. A practice that started mostly because of the, uh, you know, the uh, way WCW was run. Yeah. WCW had the same mindset back in the Monday Night Raw. It's a reason that a lot of people who I talked to online said that honestly, as big as that was, and I was a part of it, majority on the WCW side. I'm going to lay my cards right out there. WCW, for the most part, until well, 1999, when they completely lost their minds and such. And it didn't recover until 2001, yeah, and, but then and, it was all and, too late. And on the late. flip side, I'll say it. I, I'll freely admit, I didn't see any of the Monday Night Wars. It was, I, I, like I just said, it was a full calendar year after WWE bought up WCW that I first got into wrestling. I missed the entire Attitude Era. So I'm, I freely, you know, full disclosure on that. So you could, te- you could take that information and thus take anything I say with a grain of salt. Well, I'm just thinking that probably the main, my theory is if Vince is doing those, these last minute changes, I bet you just about more than anything in this particular case that he's gotten, he had his ear full of some executive at the USA Network telling him to make those changes. Because that's the one thing you have to think about. There is one thing I'll get. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's that I think a lot of people seem to forget about that is that they have to deal with TV. Exactly. You have to deal with these things. And, that's, and I think. Go ahead. Just, and that's the one thing that, you know, you, you compare WWE to WCW. And this is one thing you always have to keep in mind that I do know. WCW was a unique entity in that the owner of the com- wrestling company was also the owner of the TV network that it was airing on. So they never had, at least up until the AOL Time Warner merger, they didn't have to worry about too much network interference. Vince McMahon, he always had to deal with with um, people getting on his case from the USA Networks. I've read books where basically the former W USA head Kay Koplovitz, she hated what was going on in the Attitude Era, and by about late 1997, just before everything started churning together that pretty much started with the Montreal screw job, Koplovitz with this rumors that Koplovitz was actually looking for an excuse to drop Monday Night Raw off the w- off USA Network altogether until Barry Diller bought the network and she was kicked out. So there's always yeah. Been, yeah, there's always been a situation where WWE and Miss McMahon, they've always had to um to deal with the 
higher ups at the USA Network. And even to this day, I'm telling you, a lot of the problems I think, and I think this is one thing we'll agree on, a lot of fans will agree on, that probably the, the number one problem the probably Monday Night Raw has is being three hours long. And I've said this myself, even before Triple H. WCW made the same mistake. Yeah. That's the problem and right it's a, there. And it's a bigger issue today, as I'll get to, I said, even Triple H admitted himself, you remember, on Stone Cold's podcast, that if he had his way, they'd cut Monday Night Raw back down to two hours because, think about that, that's at least four hours a month, more than 50 hours a year of content you don't have to produce. It would make the shows tighter. It would probably leave the better matches available exclusively for the pay-per-views. And that's the whole situation that, but the main thing is I'm telling you, the whole thing about Monday night, about Monday night Raw being three hours, the guest stars that nobody likes, I'm telling you just more than just about anything else. That's the USA network. More than yeah, it else is. Yeah, being I behind be that. Su- I wouldn't be surprised by that. For the most part, it is. I mean, if you want to talk about real people who are really pissed off or like executives, just call myself, them study fans, uh, Jamie Keller. Uh, if you want to look him up, he basically destroyed, you know, WCW didn't help themselves with all the crass, you know, to, to trying to be the attitude there. It did not help itself. Exactly. And, that, you know, it, it, you know, when I look at what WCW was uh, back in those, I would have kept it. I, I'm like, you know what? That to me was one of the, if you, even if you have a network, you watch some of those pay per views, just to that alone, I would have looked at it and said, what the heck am I doing and watching this type of garbage? And, you know, just with the stuff alone, I mean, heck, you had a, uh, a, 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 a storyline. We had uh, Stacey Keebler, uh, uh, Miss Hancock, as she was back in WCW, had a, a, a miscarriage storyline. I'm not kidding you. A pay per view that started this, a miss, a, 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 a miscarriage storyline. And you know what? Are, I think I, if I remember correctly from the book I read, I think WWE almost tried something like that with Terry as well. And I'll give you one guess who was behind suggesting that idea. The uh, executives? Uh, no, uh, um, I think the, Yeah, Russo. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. But uh, more more to the point we're getting here. I think it's more of an issue nowadays about wanting those three-hour raws because we're in an era where television networks, they are desperate for live content. Because you, you just, just hear, hear everything I hear is it is more and more difficult for networks to sell advertising to pre-packaged taped material in this era where live streaming is on demand and on-demand streaming is so easily accessible to so many people. So that's why that's why sports broadcast contracts are ballooning out of control even more as you probably. But heard. here's the the thing though about that, which is funny if you look at the um, the big deal WWE recently signed, they didn't get anything. In fact, the funny thing is, and this goes back to the product itself. I mean, they they have better ratings than the NHL. Sometimes even the NBA postseason right right now NBA see how. Hyped for people to watch that, NHL, soccer, more example, yet though soccer and such has more, um, more, uh, you know, ratings and stuff. Because, again, the reason why they do is because I think it's because of what the product is. The product right there. I think NXT could sell. You know, you could have more of a higher uh, you know, higher uh, advertisers come to, say, maybe NXT. Well, but with the WWE... I mean, that, those those type of advertising, something like that. And it comes to the fact, another thing which most people seem to forget about is the stereotypes of professional wrestling fans is that they're broke. They have now no money. Now we're getting somewhere. Because th- this was basically the, um, the, the very central argument that I was trying to make here is the, is the biggest reason why WWE and Monday Night Raw, they're in a very, and the USA Network, it's a very crazy situation where one, USA Network wants that live programming for three hours on their network, but they're still not. But we, but especially in this era where demographics and stereotypes of viewers have been have have, fought, have gone down even more than before. We're back to so much of that garbage that, yeah, they're glad to have the three hours of live programming, 
but they're really not keen on the primary demographic of who turns into wrestling. So it's because I know I, to... I know a lot of fan, wrestling fans they don't want to hear that, and I'm not saying I like it. Believe me, one of the most frustrating things for me is that I know that a lot of those network executives they look at professional wrestling as low class entertainment. Oh, but they'll shoot on all these reality shows on us. They'll try to get yeah. that. I mean, yeah, NXT is isn't good and is is too low class to put on a major network. We can give the Kardashians another show. I mean, or any other Real Housewives or anything else, which exactly. sadly it is. Uh, well, honestly, here's the thing: when you have some like say Total Divas or WWE's on reality show, yeah, it would not be surprising that they get probably more ratings and probably have better advertisers on that show than their main one because yeah. again, that's what the people do want, and it's a lot cheaper, sadly, than when you have the WWE or anything else, it's uh, cheap entertainment. And that's why but, I say the one thing that probably has gotten more people upset with me than anything else is I say that I would almost predict that if WWE was ever to essentially turn Monday Night Raw into NXT, as, at least as far as the quality of the wrestling programming that were on there, USA Network would drop the show in less than a year's time. I'm almost certain of that. And the response, and I, and the response and I agree. They, and the response they give me to that is, well, so what? Screw the USA Network. We'll go to the WWE should go to a TV network that appreciates them more. There isn't another network out there. I told you. And they tried. These they, guys they all shopped the like. This is the one thing that I keep I have to ask people. If NXT and Ring of Honor and Lucha Underground, if the quality of that wrestling is so much better and would please the wrestling fans so much. Why are they not getting big TV deals? Why aren't we getting a new type of Monday Night Wars with one of those other rival productions if they would put on a style of wrestling that would actually give WWE legitimate competition? The reason why that is is because you have you, you, you have these uh, the, 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 uh, the, pro, the, the um, you know again cheap programming. Well, yeah, but, I mean reality shows are cheaper. And you have a lot of these uh, reality shows that that just can't um, compete. You have yeah. uh, no reality shows can't compete like Athletic, but they have these characters, yeah. which sadly the WWE is lax yeah. over the past you know de uh, decades and such. as real hard characters Perhaps, that people can really latch onto. I think it really comes back to the situation of they, the networks, even even if they drew, if you have a wrestling show like. Ring of Honor drew good ratings, it wouldn't be the type of viewers the network would want because it, it at least in their mind, these please please take this with notice. This is not what I believe. This is what I'm almost certain the network executives and the sponsors more than anything believe. Yes. They don't look at wrestling fans as attractive viewers to their sponsors. Because I'm sorry, I know people don't want to hear this. I don't like having to say it because I know this isn't the truth from a lot of wrestling fans that I know. But they have gone back to believing that wrestling fans are basically to, to, to be tactless, I guess, or at least be truthful. Backwater Hicks, that's what they believe. I would believe. say uneducated, inbred rubes who think everything that goes on that show is real. That would be what I'd say, that I think their attitude toward wrestling fans is. So, and that's that's the unfortunate situation, and that's why I say that yet, yeah, hey, you love the type of wrestling that's on NXT, hey, that's great. It's definitely your right. It's not that I've watched it, it's pretty good myself. I'm just saying you're always going to have to go to the internet to get it because I just and, don't see a television network wanting it anytime in the here now or in the near future, putting it on their, on their shows. And, and yeah. And the fact is, is that when you have, um, you know, stuff like, it, it, again, the WWE again, doesn't help itself when you have uh, just really stuff that is so like really bad. I mean, just for a loan, how they treated, say, for example, AJ Lee when she was, you know, uh, uh, baby face, like she was running things, the way they treated her character. When they have John Cena just completely just, uh, no, it wasn't AJ Lee, it was Eve. Yes, Eve, uh, with the Zack Ryder stuff. Where Zack Ryder, they had to basically, had to turn her, they had to basically 
if you were, do you remember this? It was like back in two thousand. You know, I, and... I vaguely, vaguely remember it, but not to that much of a detail. I but, mean, yeah, I remember it's... John Cena saying the ones I traded a broski for a hoski. Yeah, that's about that, yeah, that's that about as close as I remember it. Yeah, and and you see that, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is why uh, they tried so hard to do all this stuff. I'm like. You wonder why people look down upon this. You have you wonder why yeah, like I said, you I'm have just... everything else. It's again when you have show when you show this type of negative stuff, and not only that, but there's still stuff right there that looks completely uh, moronic and such. I mean, the divas are barely even shown any time, and nothing really matters to them. I mean, when I look at NXT, I feel like if they, I honestly believe this: if they just completely kibosh the divas division for an entire year. And they just relaunched it with, like, say, the NXT stuff, Divas and everything. I think people would actually show that stuff with more respect. And I think that will – because, hey, for the most part, WWE Divas, you know, before, they were before – like, back in the days, like, really, when I was a little kid and go see – since I'm such a big uh, fan of this stuff, mm-hmm. I was watching back in the day when you had Alunda Blaze going out. Because they did, once upon a time, treat female wrestlers – not just basically uh, cock teasers or what have you. Mm-hmm. They actually treated them with actual, they treated them like with real hard presentation and such. Well, that just shows it could be a cyclical thing because, yeah, there were people like Alundra Blaze and Wendy Richter, and then comes the late 90s, and then they bring in people like Sonny and Sable, who, for my money, those guys are worse than any, those two ladies were worse wrestlers than just about anybody you have a problem with on the roster currently today. Yeah, I'll put them as worse than the Bella, worse than even um, the red-haired, the fake red-haired. Uh, Eva Marie, but yeah, Eva Marie is actually getting better. So. Yeah, yeah, those... Uh, but then but then after Sonny and Sable, then you get in people like Trish Stratus and Lita and Molly and Ivory. Jazz. And, and yeah, so it is it, kind of a cyclical thing, but like, but yeah, but I think it definitely is a stage... Look, maybe Kevin Dunn, maybe Vince McMahon has... Um, have some impact on, and more than more than some impact on the exact type of storylines that go I would rate USA. them mostly like 70, 75 to eighty percent. Yeah, but more that, stuff I hear from backstage. Yeah, that's the thing. That, I that hear twenty that twenty to twenty five percent that I'm almost certain the USA Network has. It's it's a lot more influential. That it's a pretty big big time, and that's why I think that I think if WWE had its could be in its own perfect dream situation, they could leave USA Network and put everything exclusively on their own online network. And then they'd be free to do with anything they want, almost. But, but, I, but that's and, the and real that's, problem. I can see, I love that's the future, but I, there was a stat, I can't find it anywhere. And I, or if I can find it, I will put the link up. Um, anyway, the stats basically show that majority of people still like to watch on television. They still do television they love watching the original like tables and stuff like that. In the stuff like Netflix, Hulu, WWE Network is in its well, even though Netflix is 50 million subscribers, it still pales in comparison. People still go on to uh, terrestrial television. That's why still people watch, you know, you know, uh, you know, Dancing with the Stars or the NBA playoffs or everything else that's on right there. You know, it's definitely it, it definitely has it. They haven't. You know, online viewing hasn't been sur- definitely hasn't surpassed anything yet, but I think the writing is is being shown that it's growing substantially. I mean, I hear stories myself about you know how more and more people are quote unquote cutting the cord, so to speak. Yeah, as far but, as cable uh, and, yeah I think, but and I think and I think it's a small I'm, number. It's growing, yeah. but it's a real small number. Yeah, and and maybe yeah, maybe I think the people at WWE do kind of see that as growing more and more. Maybe they're looking too far into the future, but I definitely think they see the WWE Network as an opportunity to break free because I think, one, they're tired of the networks like USA meddling in their affairs, and they're also tired of the pay-per-views because of how much money they have to give to the providers. That's the other thing. Because everyone's one thing, the other thing that people I've heard complaining about is the fact that, you know what, they're only charging nine ninety nine for their pay per views essentially through the network. So with the lesser price, the less money they're making off of it. That's why the pay per views are a lesser quality. Now no. I'm telling you this right now. The difference between that essentially ten dollar WWE network price and the fifty five dollars you gotta pay to air it on pay per view, 
that difference is almost going exclusively to the cable and satellite providers like Time Warner Cable, Comcast, DirecTV, and all Verizon the like. and such. And by the yeah. way, histo- actually, uh, WE actually way back in the, uh, in the late 90s and such actually did do, believe it or not, online streaming for their business. They yeah, actually exactly. were the first ones to do so. Cost like five dollars, but it was grainy. It was horrible because you know no one. Yeah, had it was. Internet. It was in its yeah because streaming was an infancy there. See, but the, the thing I've I've noticed myself, like I said, I've only been a wrestling fan for like 10, 12 years or so. But in that time period, because I've not because I not only watch um the shows on television, I've gone to the American Airlines Center in Dallas, seen a whole bunch of stuff live in person, and I can tell you this that in this, just with this 10, 12 year span alone, ticket prices. To see WWE events live, they haven't risen all that much, if any, in yeah. the 10-year span. But the pay-per-view rate, they've gone up significantly. I mean, you're paying, what, $55 now for something you probably could have paid 30 to 44 10 years ago. And I'm telling you that the number one reason for that is the, is the TV providers demanding more and more of the chunk of the pie from it. That's so, true. And so in not, fact, even smaller companies like Ring of Honor actually pulled the stuff, which actually, you know, because back a couple of, um, you know, uh, last year I ordered Best in the World. It was $25 for a paper. I'm like, okay, that's good. They got over 10,000 pay per view buys. That's oh, great. That's amazing for that small company. Right. Then I looked at the next one. I looked and said, what's the next big pay per view they're going to have? And the next terrestrial one cost around $40. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not going to order that. And then the next one eventually came to around the 13th anniversary. And I said, okay, this is going to be good. They got AJ Styles. They got all these other stuff. I'm like, okay, what's going to be? It cost around my neck of the woods around $50 mm-hmm. for the uh, HD and 45 for the SD. I'm like, what in the world are they charging this? And I'm like, and no, it's not Ring of Honor's fault. It's because of these two other cable companies. It's actually getting much more of a higher um, a higher piece of the pie, and exactly. that's and you know this is the reason why a lot of people like myself who look at Sunday Ring of Honor who want to support it, but when it's the cost is way too much, you know those people don't really support it. And the less said about the Ring of Honor internet pay per view fiasco, the better for them. But uh, they tried and failed. But uh, if you but if you look with the WWE Network and they have been bumps, I mean. Sometimes, you know, watching a match and then next, you know, it freezes for two or three minutes. And, you know, I have to go for, you know, from uh, going to the uh, PC to my phone. Then if that doesn't work, I had to go to the Xbox or the PS3. There's definitely, there's definitely so speed bumps along the way. But, you know, I think I do. I, I, at least maybe I, maybe this is one area where I'm kind of be looking positive on it. And, of course, you watch my show and see. My, what we usually post on social media you know, that shocks you that I would think positive about anything, but just yeah, I do think I do think they're working hard to try to get over their bumps because I, I don't think I do think WWE is an organization that they know they have to keep their customers happy, and I think they are they don't always succeed, but I do think they are trying. Yes. Um... I think this, and they are trying, but I think the problem with the WWE and the structure as holds, I don't think it's all on events. I don't think it's all, all the bad stuff is on events, but uh, also I don't think everything is good with Triple H as well. I don't think, uh, Paul, I think the guys who run that thing behind the scenes, there's other people. So a lot of people think that is, but I honestly don't think what the NXT, it reminds me more of what WCW was a bit. And I don't think that actually gels with the WWE. And I know some people don't like the WWE, uh, the whole you know, cartoonish, uh, everything else, like guys like Jim Cornette and the way of thinking that they killed pro wrestling. If you listen to any of their podcasts, they just said straight out pro wrestling is dead. And I'm like, I don't agree with that because if that's the case, the WWE Network would not be 1.3 million. Or, yeah. or anything else was yeah, going you, on. With this yeah, you bring up Jim Cornette. That's actually one thing because, you know, I don't necessarily agree with any, everything that guy said, but I do remember one thing he said in an interview that I think pretty much um, should take into account when people talking about how well Triple H will eventually do running WWE. He was asked that question himself personally, and 
in an interview, and I'm paraphrasing what he said, but he basically said, as far as Triple H goes, I think he's going to work very hard and do the best job he can, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to deal with television network executives as well as Vince does. And that, to me, is was a very um, important thing to say because I do think that goes back to the saying how much WWE has to deal with those network executives and how much meddling they do in their affairs. That's, and whether or not, whether that's or not what killed can, WCW. And that was that will honestly, I would not see the hard that can kill WWE because they have to do you have to bend over backwards over just to do these things. I think that's what most wrestling fans and I do see that point. A lot of people don't see that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh-huh. hopefully you're not dying over there. <laughs> Sorry, I just took a bad water swig there. Uh, I went down the wrong pipe, but um, yeah, yeah, but you know, it's it's it is funny that a lot of fans don't see it that way. And I think and I think a lot of fans, you know, and I fall in this camp category myself is that, you know, it's, you know, this thing will work because I like it and that will draw money, but that doesn't automatically will draw money. Just because you like a guy doesn't mean he's going to draw all money, all yeah. this type of money. It's just, you know, you, I think that that type of humility, you know, would not probably fly and such. It's it's just, you know, a lot of fans don't see it that way. Because trust me, I, I get a lot of uh, frustration when I watch the WWE, you know, using these podcasts and such, which I honestly think uh, personally the main problems I do have is the Divas and tag team. Most of the mid-card belts are rendered meaningless, and they don't really need to be rendered meaningless. Well, I think they're trying to improve that because, at least as far as that goes, because they did put – the U.S. title on John Cena. They tried to work with the Intercontinental belt by giving it to Daniel Bryan. Unfortunately, that His doesn't injuries. work. That didn't work as well. He got injured again. But I, I think I, I think they may try to find another someone like Dolph Ziggler that will hopefully you'll put that they'll hopefully get that to work out. And but, but I think here's the thing I can think of that hopefully maybe we can get some other wrestling fans to understand exactly what I'm talking about here. You, you, when you di- when you talking about the frustrations that probably WWE have to has to deal with, keep this in mind: the people behind the scenes at WWE, they gotta deal with essentially the same type of network executives that are the reason things like Arrested Development and Firefly are no longer on the air. Yeah, and that's going to be a problem for another uh, th- thing is as well with what, uh, like I said, th- this stuff is gonna have to. They get, a lot of people are like, hey, what's what's uh why why is uh the um uh w, uh, w can't do this stuff? Like the reason why it won't draw, it might not draw that major big audience. Well, and, it would draw, it could draw an audience, just not the audience the TV network wants. That's true. That's the main thing is that they, uh, I think WWE knows the type of fans. That if it drew, it would make money for them, and I think they would love to draw for that. The problem is they can't convince the TV networks that it that that type of audience will work for them. Them that them meaning the TV networks and their sponsors. So it's kind of a butting of heads, so to speak, between yeah. the wrestling fans who I think the WWE wants to be on their side, and the television networks who want to draw a more mainstream. To, so to speak, audience. I think honestly, um, you know, before I go back to my other points about the make car stuff uh, title, but I want to get this thing right. I think it's a little bit of honestly jealousy what wrestling fans are going to when you see what's going on in other terms of media, which I always talk about. I look at say what the geek versions like. You know, you see the huge uh, things with DC Comics and uh, you know with Marvel, seeing what they're doing and seeing what they're doing, you know, in TVs and movies and such. And you see, I mean, you see other shows. Like, say, again, like, I always point out, like, if WWE really wants to look at job, like, I always say, why don't they sit down and watch, say, Gravity Falls for a minute? Or My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Or The Avatar, or Legend of Korra. Or anything else to actually get their points across that actually people care about these characters. At least take some points about them. And, you know, that sort of thing. And I sit there and I say, like, you know, I, that's why I feel like get frustrated. Because I see... These 30-minute programs can do more entertaining, more action, and more actual real good stuff 
and more good stuff coming. I think I saw a bit of Star, and I think that new Disney thing, uh, Star and the For versus the Force of Evil, that new cartoon. I actually really love that, and I, I need to watch some Star Wars Rebels because I saw some of the shows there, and I really enjoyed that. It frustrates me because you see these shows, and they have much action, excitement, and drama in like 22 to 23 minutes. Then I see an entire episode of Raw more often than not. And yeah, it just but frustrates same, me. But by the same you see token. That. Yeah, by the same token, those shows you mentioned, yeah, they're, they, we know the content is great, but you know what? A lot of those shows, they're cake, they have to deal with the same type of executives frowning on their content, and, and, what, and they're always at risk of possibly getting, getting, of getting canceled themselves, even though the content is good. Meanwhile, stuff like Big Tips Texas and Jersey Shore keep getting renew, get, keep getting in, oh, the ones that keep getting all the time slots. That's true, but um, you know, but again, I see that type of thing, and we're seeing what you know the whole comics explosion. I'm seeing the new these animations and such like that. It just feels like I think of some wrestling fans. Again, this is my personal opinion. And I think we would agree that there's a bit of jealousy there. Like, they can get all this stuff. It's like, hey, we're they getting everything. I mean, they're getting all this type of stuff, having these characters being meaningful. What do we get? Barely anything meaning. There's nothing really meaningful about these things. And that's the real problem. They want characters. Regardless of what era it is and such, the one thing that is something I think the Rock and Roll era and the, the Monday Night Wars would have to and had, majority they had meaningful characters. And they had something that a lot of people just don't really have anymore. They don't have meaningful characters. Well, that is, and that as far as it goes, I think it's a, that's more of a cyclical thing as well. Because when, when WWE first hit its big stride in the 80s, they had Hulk Hogan. But then there was a bit of a lull. They didn't really have anyone they could really put themselves around. Lex Luger didn't work for them. Nash didn't really work for them until he went to WCW and they found a new way to do it. It wasn't really until they brought in Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock that they once again had characters that they that were real, they could really sell, and that took a few years. Then those two eventually part what, stop uh, end their wrestling careers. It took them a few more years after that until they landed John Cena, Batista, and the like. So I do think they're in a situation where it's just going to where sometimes it does take a while to find that next big superstar that's going to be able to carry your organization. Well, yeah. And then when I look at these type of things, like, you know, uh, other big stuff going on, a big, uh, um, you know, because, again, a lot of people also, they're snobs and such with the mm -hmm. wrestling. I don't want to say that's a bit, but, you know, some of it's actually a bit of the snobbish stuff is because, you know, oh, WWE is stuff there is um <laughs> it, it's like oh it's the wwe but you know there's like uh, other stuff out there in fact you know you have a brand new one global force wrestling headed by um a former um wrestler from wcw WWE, and total no sub action jeff jarrett who's building something up as well i mean you, you know well, as, long is, as, as long and, as jarrett's not putting himself in the title picture that might have a shot <laughs> i hope so but i mean he's been talking to uh, according to the Wrestle Observer newsletter, he's actually been talking to WGN, Spike, Fox Sports 2, and CMT for a possible television deal for it. Um, I think that eventually that would be something um, interesting if he can do something like that. Uh, also, um, uh, you know, I, I think it, um, um, you know, uh, other stuff that, well, something like that, you see some really big things. Uh, coming for like the wrestling watch again more like I said more competition is always good but again when I go back to the mid card situation something that easily can be solved instead of this stunt stuff about putting Daniel Bryan or you know John Cena at the mid card uh, championship level I feel it would have been a very easy solution to fix have the United States championships or in a kind of attack you know do whatever main event raw some periods of time Build up their characters. And say, oh, don't, you don't need these, like, you know, what I call movement to have stunt casting and stuff like that, which I feel like what the WWE is doing with the mid card title, stunt casting. They have a big, oh my gosh, this thing's here, but once it's gone, it's going to go right back to the same problem of them being losing to non title matches and, you know, losing in the first match or second match of SmackDown or Raw. If they actually start main eventing, the, uh, st main eventing started to actually have championship matches on Raw and SmackDown. Heck, maybe even some 
um, you know, events on the WWE Network, which, you know, like the Elimination Chamber, which supposedly is going to be the Intercontinental title and the tag team belts will be on the line as well. That's, so, that's definitely that's a possibility that could work. Man, man tag team championships in the chamber, that might be a real cluster crap to, 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 to watch. I mean, and I, and I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. That's actually something I have to look forward to seeing how that's going to be pulled off. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Uh, what you say? Oh, just so you know, actually, yeah, if the tag team championships are going to be defended in, in the chamber, that's that might be pretty insane. To yeah, look at. Um, yeah, that was, um, you know, I think it's going to be more of a war game to be coming back in those days. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> with that, I think that would be more of an uh, interesting, interesting type of, um, um, Interesting time match. Next, uh, I think actually be something uh, the WWE should be doing. Other uh, stuff I think again with the WWE should be uh, uh, doing is, um, you know, having at least something. I think uh, what WWE has to do to really connect to the audience again is try to not be like the verse, which I think it should be, but I think something, you know, someone actually just actually um uh with different authority figures stop with the authority figures, which I think is a trope that started the out there that needs to go away. I think the the evil authority figure, Triple H, Vince McMahon and everything else needs to die to death. It needs That's, to go away. That, well then there may be something to that. I mean I I said this I actually like I said, I, I've gone back and watched the old, um, the little old Saturday night's main event uh, shows, and you know back then they really didn't. Of course, the, the uh, if any authority figures were more or less p- pushed behind the scenes, and in fact, the on camera story, so to speak, was that you know wrestlers essentially worked for their managers and not necessarily a big entity. It's almost like they were their own employers, where the the WWE was just the um, the sit the. Uh, the scenario they had the chance to compete in. That was kind of an interesting situation to look at. I don't know if that would work in this situation. That's one thing I criticism I get is that I'm even would love to see them go even more old fashioned than we had in the attitude era. So maybe some of my ideas aren't exactly as, as good as they might think either. Yeah. But I think that's, I don't think that W needs to, Really fix and such, and another thing I think that WWE needs to uh, fix out is something that I think most wrestling that needs to really get their seat their teeth their teeth into is the fact that um, oh they have to make their shows on the network, including their pay per views, mean something more. They need to do mean something a lot more, and instead of these, because honestly, even if the balls weren't three hours, I feel like you know this is a problem way back. And heck, you can go back to the um, brand extension and such. He just, it was just plain. Uh, the, the shows were just so needlessly out there. I mean, heck, you have pay per views like used to be like 16 pay per views back in those days. Like 16 pay per views for a, 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 one year. I'm like, seriously, 16? Now I understand it's like 11 or 12, but sometimes I'm like, there's so shows that just barely need ones. Like, it's, just tradition at this point. I feel like they're just, you know what I mean, though, right, Chris? Yeah, I, I, I think, think you have a general idea. They did, may, they might have oversaturated the pay per view situation back when they had the brand split. Although I actually always, I always enjoyed at least the rivalry battles they had with those brands back then. And you know, maybe it got. And I, I actually like, I, I didn't mind having two titles, two world titles for so long, just because I thought it lampooned. The fact that there are so many damn world championships in boxing, I almost thought that was it was meant to, um, to be a to be a parody of that. By the way, if you think you think WWE's in, in supposedly in, in any trouble right now, trust me, they got it made compared to how bad the state of boxing is in right now. I mean, hundred dollars for five. I, no, I mean, like, I'm not even a boxing fan. I don't. I didn't watch it all, but just to hear. The backlash that came out from all my fellow sports fans after that Pacquiao Mary Mayweather fight, you know, the state of boxing may be in a state of disrepair. They may not be able to get themselves out of just because th- th- there's less organization in that sport than there is in WWE. 
Yeah, and that, it's all, and it's basically their own misdoings and such. I think again, they really need to really fix that sport, quite quite fix in a hurry. I mean, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if the NHL actually starts beating it. But then again, you know, the <laughs> NHL is not much love in this country. Anyway, but uh, honestly, it's a, a, another thing. You know, you know. Again, I think the problem is that um, with the WWE, it's not looked upon as real sports or anything else. Because again, I think it's some negative type of uh, mindset, the negative mindset of what how, you know, you know how wrestlers and such uh, are looked upon. Exactly. You know? And, that, and, and, and and fans as well, but until that thing gets monetized better, and again, it's a two way street. The people need to look at it better, and the product has to look uh, as the product needs to look a bit more, you know, shape themselves up. Because if it doesn't, I want the, the way it is right now, really bland, boring, trying so hard to clamor for any type of type of sponsorship. You know, and not really getting it. Heck, getting a low ball so that even MLS soccer getting more money than them, which is amazing because soccer has little to no pulse in this country other than the World Cup. <laughs> uh, the, 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 uh, let's not get into that. Uh, you're talking about FC Dallas fan right here. I've got, uh, but they, uh, we're trying to save time to head back up to Toyota Stadium sometime this year. So you're talking to a soccer guy you're on the other end. But, like, I do get the situation. It's... It's definitely a big problem where WWE is trying to, you know, find find a way to set almost almost get their own identity back. And I think one dealing with pleasing their growing fan base that wants to see the type of wrestling that's in Ring of Honor or NXT, but having to still please the 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 television network mainstream, which yeah, mainstream the way, crowd that wants to make. So basically, they're so gaga on, you know, yeah, Real Housewives and all that type of reality stuff that's that, that's almost e- even worse off. In fact, you know, you, you, the, almost those, I would say those reality shows are more scripted than WWE right now. But don't try telling that to those, to any of their diehard fans. But yeah, I would well, say. Uh, but before I go and before we uh, end this, because it's been one heck of a conversation. Absolutely. I honestly think that to me, you know. One of the problems is for WWE is the match size of Ring of Honor because if you watch the Ring of Honor match, sadly you watch most of them. I mean, you have matches to have people hitting big moves with no real consequence. Like they get up for a big move, oh, they, they hit another big move. I'm like, they don't sell, they don't do anything else. And I see this in the WWE program. I'm like, no. It's, again, you're making, you're building things up, which is something I do agree with Jim Cornette. It's like you build all this stuff up for you know for matches. That, Again, have no to no consequences. There's no championship on the line. There's no real anything else, and it just you know when you do that, it it just makes like you know hey, so eventually you know you have like you, know, you need like one AA can't take me two and then three and four need a top or what? I'm like, dude, the, it, it's not the big show. It's not anyone else. It's just some random guy and such. It just it, it gets to a point that their, their signature moves and finishers mean nothing unless you need to hit them with a table or something. Yeah, that's to I'll, me. I really don't like, but that's just my personal thing. Yeah, my well, I guess we'll fi- I guess uh, I was to say a final word is, heard on this is that I'm not going to say the WWE is close to the height of its popularity. They may have been in, even in 1985, or say nothing about 1999 during the height of the Attitude Era, but. When I hear people saying they could be on the verge of WCW in 2000, I'm not willing to throw that type of pa- press that type of panic button at this moment. I think it's more a situation of where WWE was in 1995. It's a transitional phase. I think they're going to work it out. They're still trying to figure out what's best for carrying the network as far as WWE Network versus USA and pay per views. I still have a feeling, it's fe- and, and they're dealing with the transition of Vince to Triple H as far as running the thing. But I still think it's we're, we're, it's still I think it's still b- better watching programming than a lot of other stuff that's on nowadays. And I think they're gonna sort that thing out in the long run. Hope so. If they don't, well, there's a lot of you know, wrestling television shows that never figure it out, and they are right there in that graveyard. And hopefully, WWE can. 
stay away from that uh, graveyard. Anyway, thank you so much, Rev. Rodney C., uh, joining me in this Duke's Lounge. Hope you had a good time, Rodney C. Go ahead and plug all your stuff if you need to. Well, just absolutely, next Monday is the uh, the next issue of TV Trash, where I take on, if you watch that show regularly, you know last year I said Brickleberry might have been the worst animated TV show ever. Have I found something that's even worse? You can tune in there um, by, uh, next Monday, uh, or, or if you want to join my Patreon account before then, you can get an advanced copy of it, just... Go to, I believe, patreon.com slash rowdycproductions. Hopefully you can sign, sign up there and start getting advanced copies of TV Trash and a lot more other gifts that I try to give my loyal fans. Link will be in the description as well. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me, uh, Rowdy C. And thank you so much for joining me here. Well, not really live, but it will be on TalkShoe.com and YouTube, uh, Manic Expression, and see uh, Zipcast. And you know the escapist forms, and you know the you know such cast rails everywhere that can post this thing out there, except Blip because Blip screwed us all. So uh, you know, fuck you, Blip. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I usually do that anyway. You know, you can go ahead and say screw you, Blip, too, because you need to. <laughs> eh, um, I think I've said my piece with them for a long time, and it's Maker Studios more than Blip. So let's just try to move forward, I guess. Yeah, well, it just still is good to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you so much for joining me. Here live, but we live here on the Dixie Lounge, and we'll be back hope, but live on TalkShoe.com next week, and hopefully you, you will join me there as well. Thank you so much for joining me, Street CT. Peace and love. I'll see y'all when I see y'all later. <laughs>